guys, in today's episode we are replacing the standard RB26 oil pump gears with some brand new gears made from Billet 4340 steel. But before we pull the pump apart, let's take a look at why we need to replace these gears. There are a few ideas as to why these gears break, so let's dive into it. The RB26 is one of the best engines ever built. It is compared to rival engines such as the iconic 2JZ. The greatness of the RB26 however, is shadowed by a lurking problem and that is the oil pump. Over time, these oil pump gears can and do wear resulting in major oil pressure loss, broken gears and sometimes a destroyed motor. There are however a few solutions to this problem. Some say it's the driving surface of the area on the crankshaft while others say the gears are at fault. Fitting an aftermarket crank collar may fix the issue, yet some say just installing billet gears will do the trick. No matter what crankshaft you have, that is not the issue. The problem lies with the factory gears. They were a powdered metal and were never designed for high horsepower or high RPM applications. This is why we are installing billet 4340 steel gears into our oil pump. They feature a wave profile used on the N1 gears but still fit into our factory housing. These gears have been proven in harsh conditions and will not break, eliminating a potential oil pump failure. Okay, so to do to pull this pump apart, so we've cleaned we've cleaned the pump. Um, so to pull it apart, we're going to need a uh, impact uh, driver with a Phillips head attachment. Going to need a hammer. Any hammer will do. Ball pane, copper face, whatever. You just need something that's heavy enough to give it a good clop. And that's pretty much it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put the, the bit into the driver. You have to make sure that it's set to the correct way to loosen or tighten because you can use this driver for both and now if your screws aren't as tight as mine are then you might be able to just uh, unscrew it with a normal Phillips head screwdriver but for my situation that's not going to happen so um, we're going to get some rags put underneath just to kind of soften the blow because we don't want to chip any of this off, so we're going to keep them there. Uh, we've got a piece of wood underneath to again absorb the blow. Don't want to do it on steel because that might chip something. So we're just going to lay lay it in there. Now we're just going to give it a give it a hit. And as you can see, it is now loose. So I'll pull it out to show you. So now we're, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and pop all these. Uh, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll pop these seven out or six, and then we'll take a look at what lays inside this cover. Now, the reason we're using an impact driver is because I do not want to have to replace these screws. Um, so what an impact driver does is when you smack it with the hammer on top, it provides a very uh, quick, I guess you could say, quick burst of torque or turning force to enable you to snap that tightness of this thread. Um, if you're going to do it with a normal Phillips head screwdriver, you might find that you might be starting to round the shoulders of these, so then you get yourself into the shitters. So that's why we're using this just to eliminate that problem. Okay, so now with all the screws removed, we can re remove the cover, which will then expose the gears inside. Now it looks a bit a bit yuck uh, inside because it's I've washed it with water and it and the water hasn't properly drained out of this cover. So I'll be giving it another clean before I assemble it. Okay, so now we've got the cover off the the standard uh, oil pump housing. So now I'm going to give you a brief explanation as to how the oil pump actually works. So we're going to remember that this outer gear is the driven driven gear. This inner one is the driving gear, right? This is the suction and this is the delivery of the oil. Okay, suction on this side delivery. So it's going to look that I'm turning this anti-clockwise, but remember that this is the back half of it. So when you flip it over, it's actually turning in a clockwise direction. So Basically what happens is, uh, we'll start from this point. So as the, driv the driving gear turns, the driven gear, oil, this area, this surface area in between these 
driven and the driving gear uh, increases, right? So there's there's a there's becomes it acts like a vacuum, thus sucking oil in or pulling oil from this direction, and then as it comes around uh, and then comes to this side, uh, the oil or or that area is then compressed, so thus creating a pressure. So there's a pressure difference between these two. So once it comes around, it's compressed that oil and thus the pressure has increased and it will push, it will want to push it out. So that's how the, the oil pump works. So it comes around, it sucks oil in and then as it keeps turning and turning and turning, it comes to the other side and then it pushes oil out. And that's basically how the mechanical oil pump works and the driven gear in, in for us, the RB26, has like a little shoulder inside the driving gear, which is directly corresponding to a surface that I'm gonna show you later on the RB26 crankshaft. Okay, so now we're going to be, now we're gonna pull this, pull this out and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a difference between the gears that I've got that we're gonna be replacing and the gears that are already inside. Now I wasn't sure if these were standard gears or not, but now I know 100% that they are, so so we're just going to pop them out. It's that easy. You just come on the on the uh, suction and the driving side of it. You just pull it out from these two grooves. This will come out. All right. Uh, so now you can kind of see what's going on underneath here. If you imagine that this was all filled with oil, you would you would kind of understand what I was talking about. How the pressure differences in here. Uh, how that works. Alright guys, so here we have the replacement billet steel gears on the left and we have the standard gears on the right which I just pulled out. Now what I want you guys to notice is look on the on the driven gear here and you can see that it's got these points on each of these slots all the way around whereas this one doesn't. You can see that the actual design of this is different completely to this. Now these ones, this design was the ones that were used in the R34 N1 pumps, whereas these ones were the ones that were used on the R32 and R33 standard pumps. And you can also see that the driving gear too is slightly different in design. Now apparently these ones are meant to flow better than these. So uh, I don't uh, have any way to be able to test that to show you, and I'm not sure if we're talking about a considerable amount of difference or if we're talking about a fairies fart here, but just to let you guys know, when you go to buy one, buy one of these, because apparently these are better. So this is the driving surface on the crankshaft, the flat bit, and you can see the corresponding bit on the on the on the driving gear. So we're gonna slide this over. And now that's so that's what it's gonna look like. And then you're gonna have your driven gear and then your obviously your oil pump housing over the top. But this is the inside of it and this is this is what it looks like. So uh, there's a little bit of play there, but that's normal. Um, but basically that's how it works. So there's the crankshaft turning. That surface is connected onto this and this can't slide. It has to turn with it. And then that's how we get that, uh, that suction, suctional pressure difference that I was explaining before. And that's how your oil pump works when relating to the crankshaft. Okay, so uh, now that everything is clean uh, and ready to go back together, that's what we're going to do. So when we put things back together, uh, keeping them oiled is crucial. Uh, this, this will be the first thing that we'll put back in. Now it does, uh, you can't get this wrong. Well, with these particular gears, you can't. Um, this lip goes in to the uh, housing you can't mix this up uh, this the driven gear you can't mix the driven gear up because it actually won't let you put it in the wrong way uh, I don't know about the other gears um, but with this one that's the case so we're going to uh, lube up the gear plenty of oil just, just layer it. You never have too much oil. It's, it's very important putting things back together. Make sure it's got enough oil in it. 
so that's nice. So now we'll get the driven gear. Yeah, keep in mind I've got everything is everything is clean, clean work area, clean parts, clean hands, clean oil. It's very important to keep everything clean and dirt free. And it doesn't matter what it is, but it's particularly more important and crucial uh, when you're working on such components as these with if oil or I mean any dirt uh, or debris or anything like that can get into the oil system it can be quite damaging and dangerous for it so uh, I'm not sure which way this goes in because I've been turning it but so we'll slot it in like that so now that's now I, I can't turn it because my fingers are too oily uh, so that's installed and now we will put the uh, we'll put this uh, this valve on the oil control valve. So again, uh, oiling oil down here, oil up here, oil in the threads. Uh, you want to oil this up. Now, it, it, when you take it apart, if you're not sure which way to put it back together, uh, obviously springs have been contacting on one of these sides, so you just look at where the wares are, and I can see in there. I don't know how well it's picking how well it's picking it up on the camera, but I can see inside here that it's been worn. So that's the way it goes in. Slide that in, um, and now we'll get our springs. Now these springs fit inside one another, so this spring is oiled, fits inside the other spring, make sure that's nice and oiled, make sure the springs are the right way, I think it matters, springs don't matter, okay. Got a bit of oil on here, a bit of oil on around the edge of the thread. Very important. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> Easy. Spring in, in like that. And then we're going to push it in. So this is spring loaded, so uh, you don't want to use a tool like a, a ratchet or anything to put it in because you can get the threads mixed up and cross them. But you just want to put a bit of force on there to collapse the springs and turn to turn it until the threads get locked up, which it's not doing. There we go. So now it's in a it's in a fair few threads. So now we can just use the tool. Just to, I just, I don't want to tighten it yet. Just get it nipped so it's, so it's in like that. Swiping the excess oil off the top of the nut or bolt. Uh, so now it's clean. Everything's clean. So we're going to drop some oil into the threads where these screws go into. So. Uh, be generous. This way. Get our screws. So now we're just gonna just tighten them up. Be careful not to slip and gouge the aluminium face. Once you've got them tight, now uh, you go ahead and use the impact driver. Uh, if you don't have one, just get them as tight as you can. Be careful not to round the shoulders of the screws. I have the, the option to use this, so I'm going to. So just make sure that you uh, set it to the right setting, so tight. And then you just do the same as before, you just put it in there, just give it one clop, 
just to get that last bit of tightness and torque onto the onto the screws. Uh, so, and then uh, that's it. That's done. That's that's how you install um, your RB26 billet oil pump gears. Uh, obviously, don't forget your seal when you put it back into your motor. Um, now I took my one out of the car when the motor was already out, so I'm not sure if you have to pull the motor to get this out. I don't think you do. I think if you just take the radiator out, then that should be enough room in there for you to take it out. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys, there you have it. That is how you install the new gears into an RB26 uh, standard oil pump housing. For me, it was quite simple to remove the housing from the motor because my motor was out of the car, as some of you may know. But for those of you that are planning to do this job with the motor still in the car, it's going to be quite uh, quite more challenging than it was for me. Um, you're probably gonna have to remove the viscous fan and the, you're gonna have to get the radiator out of the way probably to give yourself some more room. You're gonna have to set up the timing. Um, you're gonna have to remove the harmonic balancer, which also includes disconnecting the air con belt, if you still got it power steering belt and the alternator belt uh, excuse me and you're also going to have to uh, remove the timing uh, belt sprocket that sits at the end of the crank shaft snout um, because all of these components sit in front of this oil pump housing um, which obviously you need to remove uh, in order to replace the gears if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful if you're planning on either doing trying to do this job yourself or if you're just looking for information uh, regarding the gears, why they break, and what we need to do to fix them, then please go ahead and like this video. Uh, all the support I can get means a lot to me and my channel. Uh, it really inspires me to keep going and keep creating content for you guys. So, without further ado, uh, as always, we will see you on the next one.